There we go. Good morning. Um, for those of you who do not know my face, I am Pastor Kim Gold. I am Associate Pastor here at Wilmington United Methodist Church. Our Senior Pastor, Travis Bonnet Kim, has been in Korea for the last three weeks, and he has jet lag. So I told him I didn't want to see him until Monday, so he is sleeping it off, I hope. Uh, they had a wonderful time with our bishop in Korea, and uh, we thank God for the blessings of them going, them learning, and them returning home safely. Um, um, as we come, if there are no other announcements, let us please join in a spirit of worship and, and fellowship together with our call to worship. Sing praises to God, O oh you saints, for those who come before, before us. He's in the song of the example of God and embody your love in the world. May God's embody. Give thanks for the past, for the Join us in the hymn, Forward Through the Ages, page 555 in the Red Hymn.
bulletin. God of all who are born, you made your intention real in our breathing and desire the fullness of our affections. Bless us in our shallow and selfish ways. Grant that we may shed the injuries and injustices of this world and place our entirety into your trust and care. Forgive us, we pray. Help us to rely on the lessons of those we love who were the witnesses to us, that we may desire and engage in all things that give you glory and move us to be the saints that will further your cause and claim in this world. Amen. Ginny is going to come forward and lead us in our children's message, so if you're a kiss, come on down. Good morning. It's nice to see all of you. Thanks for coming up. I have a question. Does anybody know what a steward is? Have you ever heard of the word stewardess? But isn't it the person on like a vessel or a cruise ship that'll help people? Exactly. A steward is someone who takes care of other things, usually someone else's property or someone's needs, like on a cruise ship, right? We used to, on airplanes, we call them flight attendants now, but we used to call them stewards and stewardesses. So a steward is someone who takes care of things, usually someone else's possessions. And as Christians, we're called to be good stewards of God's creation, God's earth. We take care of the planet, right? And we take care of one another because we're all part of God's creation, right? And in the church, we have a season called stewardship. And that's a time when we think about taking care of the church. And um, it takes money to have the doors open and the lights on and an organist and a pastor and things for Sunday school and Bibles and hymnals and programs and so forth. So it's a time, a season in the life of the church when we reflect on all that God has given us and how we can respond to God's gifts to us. So our theme this year for stewardship is gifts. Guess what we have here? Gifts. gifts. All right. So today we're going to talk about a gift that God gives us. And it's represented by this gift bag. And do you know when you might give this gift bag to someone? Do you see what it says on it? What does it say? Can you read that for you? It says, I do. I do. And there's wedding rings. So you think they might give this to someone if they were getting married? Okay. So... Why do people get married? Because they love each other. Exactly. And God gave us love. God gave us the ability to love, and God loves us. That's a pretty important gift, don't you think? How does it make you feel to be loved? How do you feel when someone loves you? Happy. Right. Anybody else? How do you feel? Excited. Excited, yes. It's good to be loved, isn't it? It's a comforting feeling. It's a safe feeling. It's a wonderful feeling. And it makes you happy and it makes you excited. So we need to be remember, we need to remember that God loves us no matter what. And that's a really special thing. Because sometimes you can be mad or sad or angry or you could do the wrong thing. Or you could be frightened and sad but know that God loves you. That's a really important thing to know, isn't it? Right? And also, besides loving us, God gives us the ability to love. What are some of the things you love? What's something you love? Ice cream. She loves ice cream? Tenny. American Girl doll. All right, her American Girl doll. Daddy! He loves Daddy, good said something else. Yes. You love Noah. He loves ice cream too. There are lots of things to love and it's important. It makes you feel good just like being loved by God. Loving something else. Make your family, right. 
that makes you feel good. So today I want you to remember that God gives us love. God loves us and God gives us the ability to love and that's really special and very wonderful and amazing, right? So today, because we're talking about gifts, I have a gift for all of you. And before you get too excited, it's not candy and it's not a toy, but it's a reminder of something that's very important to always carry with you, okay? present, a gift. Just a minute. They're all the same, so it doesn't matter what size they are. Everything inside is the same. So take one and pass it. Can you pass it to the one person behind you? Take one for you too, Noah. You get one too. Just a sec. Every, wait till everybody gets one. And before we open them, I want to say an echo prayer. So can you join with me in prayer? Dear God, giver of all things, we thank you for always loving us and for giving us the chance to love in return. May we reflect this season on all your good gifts and respond in return with our gifts to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as they go off to Sunday school, you can turn and greet one another with the peace of Christ. As we come to this time of remembering those that have left us, those who are no longer with us, let us turn to the insert that's in the bulletin and join in our prayer for all the saints. Ever living God, this day revives in us memories of loved ones who are no more. What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved, we lived our lives together. Their memory is a blessing forever. Months or years may have passed and still we feel near to them. Our hearts yearn for them, though the bitter grief has softened, a duller pain abides. For this place where once they stood is now empty. The links of life are broken, but the links of love and longing cannot break. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We see them now in the eye of memory, their faults forgiven, their virtues grown larger. So does goodness live and weakness fade from sight. We remember them with gratitude and bless their names. Their memory is a blessing forever. And we remember as well the members who but yesterday were part of our congregation and community. To all who cared for us and labored for all people, we pay tribute. May we prove worthy of caring on the tradition of our faith for now the task is ours. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. Eternal God, we offer up to you now those who have been under the ministry of this congregation, both members and friends, all who, who we loved, who have finished their course of life and now rest from their labor. Bruno Alisi. J. 
Jean Ashworth. Charlotte J. Atamian. James F. Banda. Joanne Barrett. Joan Bishop. Grace Bourget. Thomas Callahan. Joseph Camo. Jeff Coville. Andrew Crawford. Richard Crowell. Sean Dingen. Catherine Doucette. James Eldridge. Gwen Ethier. Rafael Garcia. Beth Garcia. Anthony Garzon. Marjorie German. Carol Gilliam. Ronald Gilliam. E. Bernice Gustafson. Phyllis Haley. Linda Harris. Karen Herland. Lotta Horton. Chester Howe. Jean Jacobus. Kate Keeler. Don Kirby. Ellen Klein. Cecily McKinnon. Bill McKinnon. Kelly McGinnis. Matthew McDonald. Tom McMahon. James Maselli. John Moffat. Ryan Moriarty. Mary Olosky. Eric Peach. Don Peak. Patricia D. Ross Pennington. John Poland. Marjorie Roby. Charles Mickey Rooney. Dwayne Rudolph. Eleanor Russell. Elna Santini. 
Cheryl Senecba. Ruby May Seville. Russell Stoffer. Timothy Straub. Kelly, Kyle Sweezy. Stella Townsend. Virginia Tripp. Kevin P. Valente. <laughs> Grant peace to them. Let your light shine upon them. Give comfort today to those who mourn and keep us in perpetual memory of your love. O oh God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave these named here to us, so now we give them back to you. Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter your joy in the world to come. Amen. In our prayers to you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus. For we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and of the love that you have for all the saints. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, you have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to us, to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit amongst yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and he has made known to us your love in the spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together and sing for all the saints, number 711 in the red end note.
be seated. I know that you know that I know you have known many saints. They've occupied these seats over the years. They have shown us love in so many ways on your behalf. And because of them, and because of that love, we have affection for them. We learned and grown because of their example and yours. And that affection, C.S. Lewis says, is responsible for nine-tenths of whatever is solid and durable happiness there is in our lives. It is our affection for those saints because of our experiences of them that make these personal saints continue to be a source of love of Christ present for us. Present in a way that no historic saint like Joan of Arc or Thomas Aquinas could ever have for us individually. Their presence here with us and our experiences of them has created personal memories that we can share with each other. It has created the memory of the love that God has made and created within them. Our local and direct connection to these people who through their attitudes or actions allow us to witness the work of God here within these walls, in some cases, that love even built these walls. So let's hear them. Those people that have gone on before us, let's remember them fondly for their gifts and their talents, and those acts of kindness that make us wonder if maybe they were cut from a little different kind of cloth than we were. But I don't think that's entirely true. The love that we are able to demonstrate helps us know that we are loved, excuse me, the love that they demonstrated help us know the love of a mighty God the God that thought to create these people in the first place. Those people that held within themselves perhaps a bit of God's mercy, God's grace, and even God's glory. It makes us want to meet and know God because of their example. So today we recognize them, and we thank them. And we do that as much as we give thanks for you as well. We give thanks for all of you, because you have created for us our present, because those in our past trusted God with our future. Let me say that again. You and the people that we have remembering here today who have trusted and created our, our present because of the past, we can trust God with our future. We right now are living in a present state of comfort, in a building that facilitates all that we could imagine. We are in a place of safety because at some point, somewhere along the line, whether it was in the 1800s or 20 years ago, some people associated with this congregation made choices 
possibly heroic ones, to claim the name Methodist. It could have been Methodist Society, Methodist Episcopal, and even ultimately United Methodist. And that kind of choice is not a thing of the past. Adi identifying who we are through our name, we are confronted and continue to be called to determine just how we are approaching our beliefs and how we will react and reflect the call that God has for us to serve. How we will love his children and how we live out that love as a church in our community. That's never done. Just as the saints of our past made a brave and audacious choice to live into the future, so are the saints to be. That's you. You are the saints yet to be. Our choices now and how we live into our present lives will determine just what the Church of Jesus Christ, called United Methodist, will be in the future, and what that response is, and that response is made through the decisions of who and where our choices and our skills and our resources are devoted. Are we going to hold back and withhold from God the tools needed for action in this world? Would little Miss Joan of Arc had said to those angels, oh, never mind, um, catch me later? Our response is important. The heroics of our choices and our actions now are, uh, are to live out loud and answer that call loudly to all the doubters in our midst and in our area that God, the God of love and the God of life needs not be held back from displaying that love to every one of us that, that we encounter. My challenge to us and to us all is that we let ourselves trust in God. Trust that the God who loves us, the God that created all things and guides all things, is worthy of our trust to use what he has blessed us with to give it back to him and make that audacious and radical example of his love known to all. After all, if our God is the God of the future, we must be called to be the trusting saints of the present. We thank God for all of those saints who have come into our lives. And we need to learn and use their example because they did trust too. They trusted. So can we be like them? and trust. Because we are not a people that will plant with the hope that the crop will fail. We don't swim in the hope that we will sink and we don't call out to God expecting not to be heard. Our hope and our intention is to pray and then listen and hear, then respond. And when we learn that our prayer is heard and that Christ is leading us into a direction of excitement and challenge and new ways of understanding, let's embrace it. Because we don't call on our God expecting not to be heard. We don't hope with the expe expectation of being disappointed. And I'll say it once more. We do not pray anticipating not to be heard. Do we? So then, 
We need to rely on the promises and the example of those saints that have filled this space before us. Who with hope and trust in our God who does provide, who does hear our prayers and responds to the call of God's children, we need to call out to God who is ready to respond to the faithful. And as we do, I ask you and I ask you to pray saying, God who has made all things move us. That is trusting in God's love. We're not asking to be let alone. Eli Weisel, he was a Holocaust survivor and humanitarian and Nobel Peace Prize recipient. He once said this, the opposite of hate, excuse me, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. The opposite of art is not ugliness, it's indifference. The opposite of faith is not heresy, it's indifference. And the opposite of life is not death, it's indifference. Not listening for God and expecting his direction and answers to our questions is like living in indifference to God's existence and our existence in God. And one thing that a future saint is not is indifferent, at least not when in the face of God's call. What if our saints had refused to hear? What if our saints were waiting for someone else to answer? And what if our saints expecting God to change his mind waited? We are all at some point faced with that moment that we can no longer put on our earbuds and just run from God's presence in our lives. At that point, we must acknowledge our existence in God's life. So let us pray for all of us, all the saints, the ones before and the ones now. So we pray for you that with the faith in Christ, we pray that truth will come to you. And when you are open to these encounters with Christ and with our loved WMC saints, we are allowing not only our experience to become fully real, but we are making the work of all the saints, all the saints we know, past, present, and future, a reality in this world that is acceptable to God and to you. Recently, one of our Sunday school classes did a prayer walk and we made our way around different areas of the building and eventually out to the prayer garden in the corner of the parking lot. After getting there and getting over their amazement that this congregation has been established for so long, they were additionally amazed that they, there were, have been so many pastors here. Then they wanted to know about the other names engraved on the bricks in the walkway. The reality is I don't have all those stories, but perhaps those are the memories of your generation. You who are the names to whom our children and our youth are looking for acceptance, you are their future saints. Be the audacious, future saints that our young will celebrate. Living into the future work and goals of this faith community. This community that lives outside the walls and outside of fear. 
Let us bless this community that reaches and serves boldly the world where we are the vision of Christ's love. And that love emboldens us. So be the saints. Be the celebra celebration of our saints who came before us. And act in the same way they did for us. Continue to work for good. Embrace the future because of the past. The saints who have sat in this place before, they are our example. And they are the saints that occupy God's kingdom now. Help us trust as they trusted. Help us trust in Jesus our Lord and Savior and guide, that he is opening our hearts to be the saints yet to be. Amen. As we come to this time of continuing in community with one another, let us remember those who are not present with us, though they may be far away or, or infirmed or just not present at this time. Thank you. Let us remember them. I had the opportunity to go visit Janice Titulio this week. She is mending tremendously well from her open heart surgery and uh, she misses being present with us but she is well on the mend and looks forward to being back in community very soon. We remember Al Toby and Bill Myers both who came home from the hospital this week and we ask that God continue to help them in their um, gaining of strength and healing. We ask that God keep in his presence Ray Allen, who has been in the hospital. He is there now, but uh, Phyllis expects that he may come home today. Let us keep in our prayers as well, uh, Maureen. Maureen, whose last name has fallen out of my brain, I apologize. Her sister, Phyllis Eldridge, has passed away. Maureen uh, worships with us at 8 o'clock. Um, so let us keep her and her family and the family of Phyllis in our prayers. Uh, we also remember some birthdays. Johnny Avenitis is turning 26. And Laurie Kane has had a birthday as well. And I think there was a big number attached to that. But we'll let her keep that to herself. <laughs> Are there any other joys or celebrations or concerns we'd like to share together? Cole Hodder has come into the world Thursday. We are celebrating that arrival. Any other celebrations? Wow. So we celebrate um, Nick Farnsworth being in the WMC, no, w Wilmington Heist WHS. Oh, man. Um, what was the All Star? Hall of Fame. And seeing old faces, Kevin Field. We celebrate them. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. David. Oh, a new great-granddaughter in the Stone family. Max? Max, M-A-X. A granddaughter named Max in the Stone family. Great-granddaughter. That is a wonderful thing. So, prayers. What's that? Number 11 in the great-granddaughter, grandchild department. So we th celebrate that as well. Are there any other joys and concerns? Gracious God, 
We thank you that you have blessed us with so many people in our lives that once they are gone, they still hold a place in our hearts. Those people, those saints that have come in and gone from us, we remember fondly and we thank you for the love that you gave us through them. We continue, God, to ask that you support the saints that are with us. Those who are struggling with health issues, those who are struggling with the loss due to death of a loved one, and those who are struggling due to loss because of conflict and war. Lord, some of these pains seem insurmountable, and we know that only you can be the sob that heals them. We turn our grief, our sadness, our concern and worry to you. We also, Lord, have to recognize that despite the pain that this world can bring, we are also blessed in so many ways with the welcoming of new grandchildren, with the award and recognition of jobs well done, with the seeing of old friends and places that are unexpected. We thank you for this. We celebrate the celebrations and anniversaries of births and weddings and all the things that life make life joyful while we continue to hold in our hearts those places and spaces that ache for those who have left us. All these things, Lord, we turn to you. We ask your continued grace on mercy on those who need healing. We ask your love and celebration on those that are, are feeling joyous at times in their lives when things seem so good. The life we live, Lord, can be a contradiction. Bittersweet and confusing. But Lord, mostly we know that this life is a gift. It is a blessing that you have given us so that we may be, for you, a way that your love is seen by others. So as we approach our days, live our lives through pain, illness, celebration, hope, or tragedy, Lord, we continue to dwell in your love. And we do that relying on the words that our Savior taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. As we continue to be a community of faith that relies on and trusts in God, let us now give of our tithes and offerings and trust that the Lord will use them As well. we come to this time of celebrating the Lord's table, let us be mindful that this is a blessing that was given to us freely, practiced by our saints, and an example of how we can participate fully in the love of God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, and God of the priests and the prophets, 
God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, and God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children and to all generations. So, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your unending hymn. By joint, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death. You made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you and broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we have named here today. Make them be in our hearts a witness. Since we are surrounded by that great cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with per perseverance the race that you set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. The table is ready and the feast is prepared. In the United Methodist Church, it is an open table. Everyone and all people are welcome here. We have a uh, gluten-free option of a wafer if you choose uh, and need that for any reason. Uh, I will have it available in the, over here. And um, we have unfermented juice, which is available for everyone to participate in this table and this offering of grace. The table is ready. Please come.
saints who we carry in our heart and the saints who we sit beside and the saints that we meet on our way. Go in peace. Amen.